Welcome back city builders, Kodiak the Kodiak here. Today on our small town build, we're gonna be taking a look at making one of the key staples that every small town has, an iconic church, as well as some more historic city services and a few more commercial businesses. Before we dive on in, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of my uploads like any of my City Skylines 2 detailed breakdown videos. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the annotation above. Let's get started. All right, welcome back everyone. So on today's episode, as I already stated, what we're kind of building here, and the first thing we're gonna start uh, kind of building is actually removing a lot of uh, this section right here. I was actually gonna take out the the homes on the bottom side as well, but I ended up leaving those. But I, I took out uh, a large section right here to kind of help build out this downtown just a little bit more. Um, you know, a lot of times on the edge of, of small downtowns, you'll start to see like more modern, like big box commercial buildings. And I, I really wanted a fast food place, at least somewhere in this town. I'm honestly considering adding another like drive, uh, drive through fast food place somewhere. It might even go closer to the entrance to the town just because you know, a lot of small towns will have like that one fast food place because a lot of people don't actually live in the small towns they sell uh, themselves. They live out in the outskirts. And so they when they drive into town, they want to pick up that quick bite of food. And so a lot of times like right on the edge of town is where a lot of the fast food places will be because it's easy car access. And, uh, you know, the town I went to college in, for example, was like that, like even the, the entrance to the town on just like the very edge that like virtually like no one really takes had a fast food place just like right there um, for people who live out that direction who kind of come into town that way. So uh, I really wanted to make sure we put one there and I decided on this Burger King asset because I thought it looked really nice here. Um, I wanted to put an, another auto body shop right here and I was actually thinking of an automotive store, maybe like advanced auto parts or something like that. But I ended up going with this Merlin's tire change building. I don't really know what this is. It looks a lot like um, something here called Christian Brothers Automotive. Um, and so I thought like it looked great. So I, I put it in the building there, uh, or really put the building in the town at least. And, uh, then you'll see me kind of continue this, um, direction that I've kind of been going with these trees. Um, I put it on one side of the alley at to start, and then we ended up moving it to the other side. Cause I was like, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. But, um, I really like this tree separation that we've kind of created on the backside here rather than wedge houses. And maybe the town, um, kept these like little trees as like a, a separation between the homes to, to try to keep the, um, community maybe a little bit quieter and separate from all of the commercial buildings. So uh, I ended up putting those ones in and then we'll end up uh, placing a bit more pavement on the backside of a lot of these businesses, uh, especially for, for parking for things like the the motel right there. And I, I don't know if we ended up removing parking from it, but I'll end up placing it again uh, on the front side because I don't really like the front parking on roads when we're building these businesses because I'd rather just build like a parking lot out make it feel a little bit more realistic like the wide large parking lots for small towns but um i just felt like the the motel needed parking on the front side we might end up putting a couple trees in the front just to give it that separation so it doesn't just feel like it's like hanging off the road like the classic city skylines uh way but i ended up removing uh some of the parking from merlin's auto change here and i ended up removing the the two on the left the way bob works is it just randomly picks so i just scrolled until the two on the left were gone because i didn't like the uh, again i didn't like the the parking on the front side of the the business they can either park on the road or they can pull into the business so and then i put parking Parking on the back here for employees uh, and you know maybe looking back that business could have had front parking but I don't know we could have pulled it off the road a little bit maybe but uh, you'll see me going through now with building spawn points and just changing where certain buildings uh, like can kind of go like have like cargo trucks and garbage trucks kind of come in and actually access the building and I said I was gonna do that um, after the last episode and there was some issues with some of the trucks and they were just like driving into the buildings in the b-roll and I, I went through actually on my twitch stream which you can find a link to down in the description and actually did that to start one of my streams um, so I thought that was a, a pretty nice solution for that so if you guys ever want to check out me doing some cleanup work on this build or checking out my fall build or uh, I've been playing this game Palia a bunch lately lately it's it's super fun if you guys want to take a look at that i'll put a link to the description of that game but uh we've been doing that on the twitch anywho back to the youtubes because that's where we are uh i ended up building out most of the rest of the town in this historic man uh, american top style um words are hard for me today apparently but i really like this style and i was thinking about intermixing ranch uh we've talked about that in the last episode that i was thinking kind of about intermixing ranch and i think we still will do that but for this section of town specifically i really wanted to make sure wow i just realized i placed four houses that look exactly the same next to one another 
I definitely need to fix that. Oh boy. <laughs> Anywho, uh, <laughs> we're um, I, I, we're definitely gonna stick with this style for the core part of the town. Like this is where I imagine the original town kind of was. Like these are the old historic buildings that kind of grew up with the town, and then everywhere else is maybe kind of extension. And so I want those areas to have like the intermixing of ranch and maybe some McMansions or some modern esque looking homes, kind of as we expand more out into the town, right? Um, so this core area we're gonna keep as the uh, historic American style. And you might be wondering, Kodiak, don't you don't you normally talk about City Skylines too in these? And the answer is yes. Uh, the first two episodes I did, and I the more I think about it, the less I want to. I kind of just like doing these as as let's build videos. They're a little bit easier to produce and get out in time with like everything else that I have to do in the week. Um, and I'm worried that if we do this every single episode where we talk about City Skylines 2 or some new feature uh, with City Skylines 2 or something like that, I'll eventually just kind of like run out of content. And then I'll be decentralized to kind of like make these. And it's also like a ton of work to kind of like put together like a scripted format for talking about all this stuff when like when we're just doing these let's builds, I can just kind of talk off the cuff, you know? So um, we'll probably just continue this series as a let's build series, but I do plan on releasing more videos talking about other details to City Skylines too, like all the stuff that they've talked about on Instagram and Twitter. Apparently they do, they do Instagram like Q and A's after the dev diaries. So I really want to make sure that we touch on that. But enough of that, let's get back to the build where right now we're starting to uh, place down some police buildings and uh, mostly because I'm annoyed by all of the blinking, um, we have crime stuff. And I know there's a mod you can remove to get rid of it, but it's nice to have like that reminder that, hey, we need this city service. And oh yeah, crap, I have to build a police station in this town somewhere and a fire department and, and all sorts of other stuff. So I want to make sure that that stuff gets put in. So uh, we build the uh, fire station today and the police station as well as the church, which I prefaced in the beginning part of the video. And we're first going to start with the police station here. And I, I picked a nice asset. I think it looks the most like historic kind of police station. I think that'll go with the town the best. And we end up going with a fire station. I really liked the look of this one, but the modern glass windows just were not doing it for me. So we ended up going with this uh, much smaller one, but it does fit that nice historic vibe. And the flags in the front were not American. Um, and there's, we haven't done anything in the town to like kind of signify like maybe it has a sister city somewhere or like there's a German festival or an Italian festival or, or whatever. So um, I went through all my assets here and we ended up finding a wall hanging American flag right here and we replaced it so we can put them on the front. So we can signify, hey, this is America, um, because that's what this is. This is an American small town build. So uh, we ended up putting that on the front of the uh, the building for the fire station here, and I put it right next to the police station. A afterwards, um, after all the recording, I ended up spacing these two out a little bit. So in the next episode, if we get real close to these, you'll notice that I kind of don't have them on top of one another. And I also think I might have put some plants in the road, but I ended up fixing all that. So. Um, even if in the video or the B-roll you notice it, uh, I, it's all fixed now. But um, I wanted to continue that alley on the backside of this as like a good access route for um, these businesses. But as, or, well, I guess they're not businesses, they're city services. But um, as you can see, I, I angled the alley in and just so it can fit in the backside there. And I was kind of wondering what to actually do with that corner lot. And you'll see what I end up doing with it later, which I think works really well. And I'll explain why I think it's like a fantastic spot for it. But um yeah, I think this ended up working out really well. And I was originally thinking maybe I do healthcare as well. And then when I clicked on the healthcare tab, I saw churches because some of my church as assets act as like crematoriums and um, like cemeteries. And then I was like, oh my gosh, we completely forgot to put a church in this town. It's so essential for a small town to have these churches, especially like American small towns, like every American small town's got a church in it. Um, especially one that's like kind of historic like this. It's kind of like bigger. A lot of these homes are older, right? This town was built up. So um, they got to have some churches. So we put a church in and I'm going to end up leaving one of these houses on the backside. I end up replacing it, but I really wanted like a nice um, house to kind of act as like the pastor's house. A lot of churches will have like the home just for like the, the head pastor uh, of the church. Uh, so I wanted to make sure there was at least one like house on the plot and maybe it doesn't belong to the church anymore. Maybe they sold it, but I wanted to make sure there was at least one on this block um, for the actual church itself. And this kind of signifies this is like the main road here. And then, um, you know, the church is kind of like an in between between the commercial area and like the residential. And I wanted to make sure I also built this graveyard. So I used these nice graveyard assets and I really struggled with the, the fence and like the sizing of everything. So you'll see me fiddle around with that for quite a bit. 
Um, I used these dark iron gates, which I think looked great. Like uh, the style of everything looked really well together. I just couldn't get the sizing the way I wanted it. And I started placing like two by eights and I was like, wait, this is just the same size as 16. Um, but uh, it ended up looking really nice, I think in the end. So um, we end up going through with that and fiddling around with it. But um, you know, I think this church ends up looking absolutely fantastic in the end um i can't believe i even forgot about it because that's like when i usually build these small towns it's like one of the first things i think about is like okay what kind of church is this town gonna be because that's gonna determine like how maybe nice or historic the town's gonna be based on the church like if it's a modern church like maybe this town's newer or if it's an older church well maybe this town's older um you know it's like one of those key fixtures that every town has to have and i don't like to use duplicate assets too often so when i um um, placed the town like when I place like a specific object I want to make sure that I can fill it in with a similar historical era objects like I don't want like a brand new church like on the side of this road because this town's a lot older so uh, I'm glad I remembered and I'm glad that we're early on in this build so I can make that mistake so um, as you see I finally have place these fences down and I'm finally starting to get like a good gauge of size. I was a little concerned because these are so big. I almost like scaled them down a little bit using move it. Um, but I ended up keeping them the same size and destroying them. And uh, you'll see, I end up putting like a nice little path coming through here. So I'm going to use the rest of this time to kind of explain why I'm not doing City Skylines 2 stuff during these Let's Builds anymore. And honestly, it's just it's just time. It's really just time. Like, it takes a ton of time. Like, I want to be good about when I do, like, a speculation thing, like, with the DLC or when we did the speculation with, uh, while well, I was planning on doing speculation with the crossover connection potentially between Life by You and City Skylines 2. Um, I really wanted to make sure I, like, had, like, correct information on that. And because I've never, like... I I didn't really play like that city that Sim City before um to know like what that connection was like there was like a ton of back end work to actually like end up doing those and so I wanted to like I prioritize getting these videos out to you versus giving you something completely unique and off the cuff like that right and so I really wanted to just double down and focus on these videos so I hope you guys enjoy these uh, and I hope you guys like the build series and if you do and you made it this far you know maybe consider subscribing I put a lot of work into these so um here we are building out the rest of the cemetery and now I've detailed it with these trees. I think it looks super nice. Uh, and then you'll see me put the big parking lot on the backside of the church here. I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to like have a huge cemetery and then maybe take over another block to add parking for the church. But I kind of thought, no, maybe we'll put another cemetery somewhere else. Like maybe there'll be another church with another cemetery somewhere else in town. And maybe that one will be bigger or something like that. Or um, we'll just fill in this back lot with with parking. So uh, because I don't really know how old I, I imagine this town being. I, I kind of imagine like maybe cars have kind of been around since the town was developed. Or maybe that's like a little too early in its development. But um You'll see me now kind of go through town and try to find the exact kind of house I want <laughs> to be on the corner there. And I'm basing it entirely on the actual fence. Oh, it's one of the four buildings. Gosh darn, I really gotta fix that. Anyways, um, I really wanted to make sure that there was a good fence because my thought is that maybe like, you know, cause there's a parking lot, that's kind of an alley right there. I wanted the uh, idea for that, that house to kind of like separate itself from the church. Like maybe they sold the, the house from the church and it's just kind of there now. <laughs> and so I wanted to help give that house a little bit of separation from the actual pavement by making sure it had a fence to it, right? So um, you'll see me place these ho homes right here and these homes on this, uh, these blocks right here on the ends, I wanted to make sure they face the main Main road um, and then they kind of change as they uh, go back into the neighborhoods because you know a lot of times as you're driving into these towns you have these homes that are facing the actual main road itself and then it'll shift into the neighborhood direction so like you know the the blocks will rotate like even the road I live on currently is like that where you know the homes on the main drag are actually like on that and then as soon as they get into the block roads they rotate and then they follow that road so I wanted to make sure that it, it was like that so um, I, I put some more detailed trees kind of around the edge on the back side of the fire department here and this is where I kind of start detailing the back side of the fire department and the police station because I'm like and I we got to have parked police cars to kind of like let everybody know when you're like walking through or whatever that this is the police station um, 
I was contemplating putting like fences kind of around it to kind of like guard off the police cars, but the one, the police station in my hometown didn't um, have any fences or anything around the police cars or anything like that. And I know in bigger cities, that's pretty common. Like they fence off the police station. A lot of times there's like a jail associated with it, right? But that's just not how it was in my hometown. So I wanted to uh, just kind of like leave them out in the open like that. And um, you'll see me fiddle around a lot with the back of this fire station because it's kind of like a weird size. I wanted to make sure there's parking for the firefighters, but there's not really like that much blank surface area on the back side of the fire station and I didn't want to put parking on the right side because I thought I wanted to put a big park right there and so uh, eventually I end up just only putting two parking spaces on the back side and then I just kind of envision that um, maybe the firefighters park on that back alley and or maybe like on the side streets or something and then just walk walk over it's like not that far so I thought that was pretty I thought that was pretty fair um, and then I wanted to put like a little planter area like right here on the corner just because like there's like a lot of pavement right here and I wanted to put a tree and I thought you know it's a police station there's a lot of historic stuff over here it's a nice neighborhood that you're close to the school maybe this would be like a little bit nicer of a planter rather than just grass patch so I ended up going with this brick one which I think fits kind of like everything that's over here and I think it looks really nice so we end up putting a tree right in there um looks really nice I'm happy with it I'm happy with how this area turned out I really like these trees um I don't know who makes them but they're, they're when I search for them they start with pd so um, maybe in the next episode, I'll, I'll, I'll actually take the time to look and see who makes them, but they're absolutely fantastic. They come with the map too, I believe Dakota falls. So they should be in the map collection, which I will be in the description. So if you actually want to find the trees before then, uh, you can do that. I think they look absolutely fantastic. Um, I know Mr. Mason makes a ton of fantastic trees and I don't know if these are his, but they look great. So you'll see me end up doing the spawn points for the fire station as well. I wanted to make sure that fire trucks could spawn out of both doors and people could access this, the actual front door if they want to walk in and the back door uh, would be actually where they unspawn. So the, the fire trucks will actually come out from the front and they will, when they are coming back from a fire, they'll come to the backside instead and like actually have to drive through, which is pretty cool. I love using building spawn points. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. So um, you'll see me fiddle around with that here now. And then hopefully we kind of get on to placing more of these car props after we do the police station as well. And I was kind of confused on how I actually wanted the police station kind of unspawn. And then I saw this building on or this door on the side and I ended up actually moving it off uh, recording to kind of just have them drive into the alley and then despawn. But um, when I like moved everything around, but that that side door was just like the only door I could think of to like actually have them kind of like drive in and like hide away basically. Uh, and then the police cars we end up placing in the back to kind of signify that this is the parking lot for the police cars are the Michigan State Police ones. I live in Michigan. I think they look fine. They look good. Um, they remind me of home. I put them in. <laughs> um, does that mean that our county is in Michigan? Not necessarily, um, but I, I just thought they looked pretty good. Um, now they're all really blue and I was like, wow, this is like uh, very aggressive and a lot of blue. So I ended up using the highway patrol ones to kind of fill out the rest of the area with some like black and white to kind of signify that like there's state police here and then there's maybe some like local police here, um, both using this building. I don't know if that's realistic, <clears throat> but that's how I um, decided to do it. So. Uh, and then I tried to sink them down cause I thought they were like floating at first, but then I realized no, 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 the tires are just sitting perfectly on it. So, uh, I left them as is, and then we go through here finally and do this little side lot and we end up putting in, um, I, I tried to find a park that fit it was three by three area and I couldn't find one <laughs> at all. I don't have any three by three parks. So I ended up going with a three by two and this is a side lot, but it's fall. I liked how I had the bench and I thought that would look really cute there. And then I ended up just kind of sorting through by sizes and I saw these like caged in basketball courts and I was like, yeah, this could actually work pretty well. Um, in my hometown, the fire uh, department has like a park associated with it. It's the fireman's park. And there's a little basketball court kind of associated with it and like baseball fields and a bunch of other stuff. And so I thought that was like kind of like a cool little concept to put like a little basketball court kind of next to it. Maybe for the firefighters who are like just like on actively like, you know, hanging out at the, the firehouse for whatever. I don't I don't really know how like firefighting works. Maybe we should ask Canadian Moose. Shout out to Canadian Moose. Also, I love him. Uh, if you guys aren't watching Canadian Moose's build series, I don't know what you're doing. I'm going to put a link to the description in the annotation above. But anyways, uh, he was a firefighter. And so maybe he knows more. But um, um, the, uh, 
I, I wanted to make sure that they had like an area for them to do like a little bit of activity if they're just kind of hanging out or whatever. So, uh, and then also the public can use it, which is great. And so I ended up doing a little bit more detailing here to kind of like clean up that area. And I just think it looks so good. Uh, I'm super happy with just that little area. And so the next thing we do is I kind of do a little bit, and this is actually the last thing we do. Uh, today's video is quite a bit shorter, but I end up doing uh, just an extra path kind of here around the uh, baseball field. I just, I wanted to give it some kind of structure for when I go in and you'll see me at the end, place some trees uh, in and around the backside here. Um, just to kind of like give this um, high school's like, I don't know, ball field, just like a little bit more of like a park vibe. I just wanted it to feel like, I don't know, a little bit nicer and like ingrained in the community with these old growth trees, right? Make it feel like it's been here a while. Um, and so I really wanted to uh, do a little bit more detailing with trees on the backside here and really make it feel like it's interwoven into the community. Now, whether or not like a lot of people or locals would end up using this because nobody walks here in America, especially not in small towns, um, I still wanted the the paths there because maybe some people like, you know, on the weekends might go just walk around their neighborhood with their kids and maybe they'll walk through the baseball field uh, as they go through to walk uh, to the downtown or something like that. This is like town it is like a little touristy. So, uh, you know, that might be a little beneficial for them. So I end up putting these trees through here and you'll see like one little shot here at the end where I kind of like look into the forest. And I think it looks really nice. I like these trees a lot because they don't have like a lot of like under coverage. So you can kind of like see through and I think it looks so good. So uh, that's pretty much all we did in this week's episode. I want to thank you guys for watching. I appreciate appreciate it. Uh, if there, you guys have any suggestions or things you think I forgot in the town, please put them down in the comments below. Next week, I hope that we actually get to tackling the McMansions across the street that will kind of go with the shopping center over there or any kind of like newer development across the road that I've been wanting to build as well as I, this is something I, I realized uh, late and I hopefully I edit this in at the end here. But um, if you go through the whole map, you'll notice that this area that we're building in does not actually have any connections to the highways in the map. And that it's actually just like more of like a local county road. Um, maybe it's speed limit's probably still 55 miles an hour or something like that, but it kind of cuts through and it has its own spawn points. And that's where we've been building. So this actually is completely separate and isolated from the highway because uh, as you guys might have seen in the first episode, there is that broken and destroyed bridge because that's out. There's actually no way to get to the other side of the map. So we need to build an on off ramp on one part of the highway. Uh, it's going to have a ton of traffic because it's going to allow for so many more outside connections and people to kind of come into the town. And so it's, I think it's going to get busy and I'm a little concerned that it's going to be too much traffic for us to handle. Eventually, we're going to build more connections across, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll build it probably in the next episode. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope to catch you guys on Monday for our uh, dev diary breakdown on the economy of City Skylines 2. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, drop a like, do all that stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Deuces.